Hi guys, Steve Girardi here. Welcome to Steve Strings. Today I'm going to talk to you and show you how to make bottleneck slides. Now for those of you who uh, build or play cigar box guitars, many of you would like to try using a slide when you play. And while you can always go to the store and buy a slide, uh, if you're going to build your own instrument, why not build the tools or accessories that go along with it? Now earlier I showed you a video on how to make your own guitar picks, so now let's look at how to make slides. Let me start off by talking about what it is you're looking for in a bottle when you're selecting a bottle and what kinds of things to avoid. The first thing you're looking for is something with a neck that has a flat area because not all bottles have that. For example, Here's a bottle, it's a Guinness bottle, and it has a curve to the neck. It's also a very short neck, so this would not make a good slide because you don't have a flat surface to make contact with the neck. Uh, here is another bottle. This is a Shiner. For those of you who don't know, down here in Texas, Shiner is a local brewery. This bottle, it starts off fairly flat. It kind of gets a little wider and then sort of narrows back down. So if you're using a bottle like this for a slide, you'd have to use just that very first part of it before it flares out and then comes back in for like a waist. So I'll give you some examples of some good bottles. This is a Polliner bottle and compared to say a Shiner bottle or a, a Budweiser bottle or Michelob bottle, which are relatively thin, these bottlenecks here are long, they're straight, and the, the glass is actually a little thicker. The also thing to look at, when you're looking at the width of the bottle, uh, say this is a, a Dos Equis bottle, the Dos Equis bottle gets wider, faster in the neck than say the Polliner bottle does. And so if you're looking for a beer bottle, the Polliner would be a better choice than say the Dos Equis, though I kind of like the green. So again, the Dos Equis bottle is also, you can see, a fairly thin glass, uh, say compared to, um, say, a, a wine bottle neck, which is relatively thin. And for most folks, they prefer the tone you get from the, the thicker glass. So again, we're looking for a straight neck, such as with this Polliner bottle, relatively long neck. Um, I also came across this uh, soft drink bottle it's Sangria Sonorial, which you can pick up at the HEB down here in Texas. As you can see, it also has a fairly straight neck before it starts to flare out. So, uh, in fact, this one here, uh, I have one of these made right here. So, this neck came from a Sangria Sonorial bottle. And this is one of my, my favorite slides, actually. So, this is a good example of what you're looking for, say, as opposed to etoseques, which is thinner glass, um, and it gets wide fairly quickly. If you're looking at wine bottles, the ideal kind of wine bottle you're looking for is one with a long, straight neck. This one is perfect for making slides. And when you make these, you basically cut it off, and you can either cut it off uh, here first, so there's no lip on it, and then cut it off here, or you can leave that on. Uh, a less ideal bottle would be something like a champagne bottle. Now the nice thing about champagne bottles is they are really thick. That's a good thing. But you can see here this bottle starts to flare almost immediately, which means if you're looking at a flat area of this neck, only about this much of the neck is flat. So I have made some of these. I don't think I have one handy with me right now where I was looking for a stubby slide, a short one. So if you're doing that, basically you would cut it to right there before that flare starts and you would just have that short slide. I think the one I did, I cut it off here at the neck, at the, at the rim, whatever you call this, and then I cut it off there so it's just a short slide. So those are things you're looking for in a bottle. You want a bottle with a relatively narrow, straight neck with fairly thick glass. I'll give you some other examples of some ones that I've cut when I was first learning this process that were not ideal. I didn't realize it until after I made it. Like for example, here is a bottleneck. 
And I think you can see on this one here that it starts off straight. The first inch and maybe inch, inch and a half is straight, and then it flares precipitously. And so because of that, this is a bad slide because I don't make consistent contact. In order to make contact with the strings here, this pushes down much farther. So this is a bad slide. Do not make a slide out of uh, a neck like this unless you plan on having it be just a little short stubby slide. So here are a couple of examples of some stubby slides I made. Again, this cobalt blue bottle I just liked, and I made a short slide out of that one there. And this is one with a similar kind of bottle as this one, um, in that it flared fairly quickly, and so I cut a short slide. But there's something about this bottle I don't like, and you may see it. This one is a screw top bottle. So because of that, I mean, this part of this slide is on my finger. Before we get to anything, we can make contact with the, um, with the strings. And so a better slide would be a slide this long, but that is just neck, not the, the, the rim part of it. So this would not be an ideal slide. Uh, let me give you examples of some length. And of course, how, how, how long should the slide be? Well, it depends upon how wide the guitar is you're playing. Um, if you're doing a three string or a four string cigar, back, cigar box guitar, people usually or often use a, uh, a one by two piece of wood to do that, which really means the wood's really an inch and a half wide. So, so for example, if I have this guitar here and this neck here is plenty long enough, um, if you're working on a six string guitar, well, that's a wider neck. And so you would need to have a wider slide for that. And so this neck here, this would work on a six string, um, whereas a slide like this one here, which is so short, you couldn't use this on a six string unless you were trying to pick, you know, individual strings. Another thing to think about is how you're going to protect your slide once you've made them. And I've learned this the hard way because I've actually had some slides broken. Particularly if you're using a thin walled uh, beer bottle, they're actually fairly fragile. And they're even more fragile if you end up cutting this end piece off because this actually gives some strength to the whole structure. If you cut it off here, this is very fragile. So what I found that works for that is I take these um, pill bottles. And so, Bottles that are wider, you know, like a, uh, a beer bottle, they need to go in these wider ones, whereas uh, narrower pill bottles work for these um, wine neck bottles. But this is nice because you can put your picks in there, you can put the neck in there, you put the, the lid on, and you toss it in your gig bag, and even if you drop it, it's not going to break. So so keep that in mind. Uh, and. I should also say that in this case, a bigger pick won't fit in this bottle um, horizontally, and so I put the smaller picks in that bottle to go to go along with the slide that I put in the bottle. So now that I've told you some things to look for in selecting a bottle, before I actually show you how I cut these, let me go ahead and give you a little bit of a sound sample of what the different types of slides sound like. And I should say that those with the narrower um, walls on the glass tend to have the, the brighter kind of a sound. And so this is a Dos Equis beer bottle slide, which is very, very thin, um, about the same thickness as, say, a Budweiser kind of a bottle. So let's go ahead and see what this sounds like. Let's go for a thicker walled one. This is a beer bottle, and this is a uh, shock top bottle. It's uh, not quite as narrow in the mouth, but the, the, the glass is actually a little thicker. So hopefully you can hear this is not quite as bright. This next bottle neck I'll use is this, again, thicker glass, and again, you can compare that to the beer bottle. It's much thicker glass, and this was the Sangria Sonorial uh, soft drink bottle.
And this last slide is the thickest of the lot. And this is this sort of cobalt blue wine bottle slide. So one last time, the thinnest compared to the thickest. So there you have it. Let me go ahead now and I'll do a little video clip to show you how I cut these. And I should preface this by saying that I've used more than one method in the past. I've seen some folks have used um, uh, saws that they use for cutting tile that kind of runs water on them. I don't have that. Most people don't have that. I've seen where some people say you want to score the bottle. You can use that with like a, like a diamond, uh, not a diamond saw, uh, with like a, a glass cutter. You can score the edge. And then you go back and forth between putting hot water on that score and then cold water. You go back and forth pouring hot and cold until it cracks at that line. I've tried that and I've made some from that. And in my experience, to get one good clean break would take me like four or five bottles that would get a linear cut going up the neck, which would ruin it. I have to throw it out or they would get a jagged edge. What I found works well and works perfect every time to get a clean cut every time is using a, a, a rotary tool like a Dremel and a, a, uh, a diamond disc. I basically just uh, hold the bottle, I put the Dremel on there and I just turn the bottle as I hold it to it. I go around several times uh, to basically make a good clean cut. You don't have to cut all the way through once you make the cut, then you just sort of slow down how quickly you turn the bottle, add a little more pressure on the disc, which makes it heat up kind of in one spot more than the other. Then that heat goes right along that line and it pops off clean. The only thing you have to do then is take the Dremel tool um, and, uh, and look at just sort of beveling the edge with the Dremel tool and getting it smooth. The other thing you can do as you're polishing these edges uh, you can take, of course, sandpaper to do the edges, or you can also just take the two bottles. And you can just do this, put one bottle inside the other. So I'm basically smoothing the outside edge of this bottle and the inside edge of this bottle. And then you switch, and that also gets them smooth as well. But typically, a little sandpaper, that works pretty quickly on both the inside lip and the outside lip or your Dremel tool. So let's go ahead and cut to the, the uh, Dremel tool, and I'll show you how I do that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut this Dos Equis bottle. And I need to have some kind of a gauge for um, to get my right length of the bottle. What I'm using is I'm using the back side of this button here up against uh, the edge of that lip to put me in the right position for this cut. In real time, it took just that fast. Again, you can see that those Ekes bottles are fairly thin. All I have to do now is just sort of smooth those edges up, and I've got a slide. All righty, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut the top off this one uh, polymer bottle, and then cut it again shorter. Let's go ahead and make this do its thing.
go. That fell off clean. All right, now that I've cut this top off, I'm going to go ahead and uh, smooth these edges a bit so I can have my thumb on there to uh, cut the neck the rest of the way off. Okay, let me check and see how smooth that is. All right, that's smooth enough for now. So when I do this, what I do is I basically use this as a guide to, uh, to have the, the length of what I'm looking for. Um, and I think that's about the right length. Let's double check this again, see if I'm looking at the same length there. Yep, yeah, that's about right. Okay, so you can see there that I have a nice, clean cut. All right, it took me a little time to get through there, but that's a nice, clean cut. Now I'll just go ahead and smooth these edges. Okay, so there we have it. I can do a little more polishing on that, but basically I've got a decent slide there. Now this one here doesn't fit quite as snugly than as it does with the rim here. Because here's the rim, and you can see it holds on there quite snugly. Because I cut that little lip off, right, it's, it's more inclined to kind of drop off. So that's just something to keep in mind. One of the things you can do to help these stick better, you can put a little bit of um, mole skin in there. Put it inside, and that way you can kind of grip your finger a little better. But there you go, it's a bottleneck slide, plenty wide enough to use on a cigar box guitar. In addition to using the Dremel to get these edges smooth, you can also take a sanding block and uh, you can get the sharp edges off and polish that some more that way as well. You can also take a sanding sponge, particularly put inside and get those inside edges smooth. Now that you've seen how I use the Dremel tool to cut these, you'll see that these are really pretty easy to make. I mean, lots of folks have rotary tools in their house. And if not, I know I can go down to, um, say, uh, Harbor Freight, or you can go online and get a rotary tool for, you know, under $20, certainly. And, uh, and with that, and you get some of those diamond discs, you can cut bottle after bottle after bottle with this and get a clean cut every time. So I hope this was useful for you. Hopefully you'll see that making your own bottleneck slides to go along with your cigar box guitars is a really easy chore. I hope this is helpful for you. Thanks for watching.